So, today we are going to discuss uh, another important topic in industrial microbiology that is nothing but a fermenter. So, all of you know what is a fermenter, right? So, what is a fermenter? It is a vessel which is used to carry out fermentation process. So, you know what is fermentation process, we have discussed enough about what is fermentation, what are the types of fermentation, all those things. So, so another name for fermenter is a bioreactor. Why it is called a bioreactor? Because it is a reactor or it is a vessel which is used to, to carry out the biological reaction. So, the fermenter and bioreactor is one among the same and you can define a fermenter or a bioreactor as an apparatus in which a biological reaction is carried out. So, you know that there are various classes of fermentation process, uh, uh, various types of fermentation process and each and every fermentation process required a specially designed fermenter. So, there are various types of fermenters are also available. So, before discussing the different types of fermenters, so let us discuss the what are all the general features of an ideal industrial fermenter. So, you know that the fermentation process, it is uh, a lot of uh, energy exchange process actually there will be lot of energy will be released lot of energy will be utilized so there will be lot of temperature fluctuation pressure fluctuation there will be ionic strength const, uh, fluctuation so many things which will happen so you should keep it in your mind that uh, an ideal fermenter should withstand all this type of unfavorable conditions it means that the material used in the fabrication of fermenter should be strong enough to withstand the interior pressure due to the fermentation medium. One more important thing it should not uh, I mean it should be resistant for corrosion during the process for the corrosion should not happen and it should be free from toxic effect for the microbial culture. You know that the many of the heavy metals uh, which are uh, which are toxic to the microorganism and if your fermenter material itself uh, releasing some sort of toxic material the microorganism will die and the fermentation will not be successful. So, the first and foremost thing which should be keep it in your mind is the fermenter should be designed with what a material which can withstand high unfavorable condition it should not be corrosive and as well as it should not release any toxic material. The most important or the most uh, uh, drastic enemy for a microbiologist is nothing but contaminating microorganism. So, your fermenter should, should permit easy control of contaminating microorganism. It should, the, it should control the microorganism, a contaminating microorganism, otherwise the fermentation process will not be a successful one. You can just imagine, uh, you know about the wine fermentation which will be carried out in a particular vessel and uh, somehow due to the leakage or any provision, the some pathogenic organism like the salmonella typhi is entering inside, what will happen? Your entire fermentation broth is contaminated with a pathogenic organism which will result in typhoid or other things when, when, when the uh, public consumes the finished product. So, the fermenter should permit easy control of contaminating microorganism. The next important thing is the fermenter, uh, the fermentation uh, tank should be, I mean the fermentation tank should be provided with uh, the inoculation point for aseptic transfer of inocula. Again, again uh, of the problem of contamination, there should be a specific site, a very, very controlled site for the inoculation, aseptic inoculation of your seed culture or your initial culture. In case of aerobic submerged fermentation, we know that the fermentation, I mean the aerobic fermentation will happen, the anaerobic fermentation will happen, submerged fermentation will happen, solid state fermentation will happen. In case of especially aerobic submerged fermentation, the tank should be equipped with aerating device. For proper aeration to happen, the tank should equip with what? The aerating device. I will repeat once again, first the thing which I uh, spoke about, the material to be used, second thing it should resist the contaminating microorganism. The third thing, there should be a specific site for the aseptic transfer of your inoculum, inoculum and in case of aerobic submerged fermentation, the tank should be equipped with what? Aerating device. The next important thing is an ideal fermenter should be provided with a stirring device for the uniform distribution of air, nutrient, uh, air and nutrients for the microorganism. So, you know that it is a huge uh, batch culture. So, what should happen? The nutrient should be completely circulated and it should be available for the, all, the, all the organism and there should not be any anaerobic condition which will be created uh, uh, during the fermentation process. So, therefore, you should take care that a fermented should be provided with a stirring device for the uniform distribution of air and nutrients for the microorganism. And you, you may have heard about baffles, right? 
the baffle should be present to avoid vortex formation. It is a major concern during fermentation process. The baffle should be there. There are different classes of baffles we will see in the coming classes. So, the baffle should be provided to avoid any sort of vortex formation. The next important thing is the fermentation vessel, vessel should be equipped with a sampling valve for withdrawing sample for different laboratory test. So, the fermentation process may be a 21 days fermentation process. So, in between you want to evaluate whatever the uh, metabolic activity or the whatever the biochemical activity which has, which, uh, which has happened inside the fermenter. So, you want to check it, your laboratory in vitro you want to check it. Therefore, they should be, I mean you should have the samples. So, your fermenter should be equipped with the sampling valve so that you can withdraw the samples and analyze the samples throughout the fermentation process. And there should be a provision for controlling temperature and pH of the fermentation media, very important aspect. So, you know that you are, you are, you are using a mesophilic organism. In case of mesophilic organism, you know that uh, most of the mesophilic organism which is having a specific temperature of optimum temperature of 37 degree centigrade, the pH of 7 for example, I am telling that. If any fluctuation in this is happening, what will happen if the pH, is go, uh, pH has gone to uh, 5 and the temperature has gone to more than 45 degree centigrade, definitely this organism cannot withstand and do a proper fermentation process. Therefore, the fermenter should ensure that there should be a uh, uh, provision for controlling the temperature and pH of the fermentation media. Next important aspect is so there should be a facility for the intermittent addition of antiform agent. See, you know that when the fermentation process is which is, uh, is going on, what will be there will be lot of form formation which will be there. So, this form formation which will interrupt with what the ongoing fermentation process. So, the anti-form a forming agent should be added. We will discuss in de uh, detail what is anti-forming agent, what are different classes of anti-forming agent, how it acts against the forms, all those things in the later classes. Now, you just understand that the form formation is a very important or a very negative aspect in case of fermentation process. So, you should uh, cleave that forms for that you there are lot of anti-forming agents. So, there should be a facility for the intermittent addition of anti-forming uh, agent. As well as uh, there should be a provision for feeding certain medium components during the progress of fermentation. So, the addition of certain components may require in the intermittent stage of the fermentation process. So, there I mean there should be a provision to do so also will make your fermenter as an ideal fermenter. And your fermenter should have an outlet or a drain at the bottom, which is essential for the removal of the completed fermentation for the, for the furthering process, I mean for the process. Once the fermentation is over, there should be a provision. There is an inlet for fetching, right? So, to remove this fermentation media after the fermentation process, there should be a provision to remove that also. The most important thing, the man plays a very important role during the fermentation process, even though it is an automated uh, uh, instrument, uh, there should be a manhole should be provided at the top to access inside in the fermenter for different process for repairing all those things, there should be a manual also should be provided. So, all the, these are all the basic 11 parameters which decides an ideal fermenter. I will I'll just, I'll just repeat once again, the first one I told about the material, the second thing which I told about what uh, there should be an easy control of contaminating microorganism and the third thing I told is there should be an inoculation point for aseptic inoculation and the third next one there should uh, about aeration I told you and the next one there should be a stirring device should be there for the distribution of air and nutrients and the baffle should be there to avoid vortex formation and there should be a sample wall for withdrawing of sample for intermittent analysis I told you and there should be a provision for controlling what the temperature and the pH we will see that how exactly it can be controlled and there should be an intermittent addition that the form formation will be there there should be a provision to add the anti-forming agent in the intermittent uh, fermentation process as well as the, at the end of the fermentation process you want to remove the fermentation broth there should be a uh, provision a drain in the bottom to re do so as well as to maintain all these things uh, there should be a manhole for early repair or any sort of uh, mechanical or technical damage which has happened for so that a manhole should be there. Next we will see a typical fermenter ok, we will come back to this fermenter later and uh, uh, batch fermenter ok, uh, again uh, you just look at this particular diagram a batch fermenter, this is a typical batch fermenter. 
So batch fermenter, all of you, all of you might have studied from first semester, a batch culture, a continuous culture means it is a batch of what a fermentation uh, materials are available in the fermenter. So that is nothing but the batch fermenter. So the batch fermentation uh, are available with varying capacities. The capacity of the tank may range uh, from a few hundred to several thousand gallons. Okay, it depends upon how much product you require and what is the process. All these things based upon that, the size varies uh, from a few hundred to several thousand gallons. Okay, a small laboratory fermenter or a pilot fermenter and larger production fermenter are available. Depends upon the type of fermentation which you want to carry out. For example, a small laboratory fermenter are in size range of one to two liters with a maximum of 12 to 15 liters can be categorized under what a small laboratory fermenter. The second thing is a pilot uh, fermenter, a pilot fermenter which will be having a total volume of around 25 to 100 gallons, so it can go up to 2000 gallons also. So, such type can be categorized that is up to 2000 gallons can be categorized as what a pilot fermenter. Next comes a large scale fermenter, so which, uh, which varies from 5000 to uh, or 10,000 or it can, it can reach up to 5 lakh to 10 lakh gallons also. That is the uh, large scale fermenter which will be employed in, in the different industries. So, the mo see when I am talking about it is uh, 2, I mean 10 lakhs or 5 lakhs or 2,000 gallons, uh, it does not, it is the total volume of what the fermenter. It does not mean that the fermentation broth or the fermentation media will be completely packed up up to all this volume. There should be some air space. Okay, there should be a working, uh, the working volume will be different. The working volume of a fermenter will be always lesser than that of what the total volume. So, there should be head spice uh, left in the top of the fermenter, okay, of the aqueous medium. So, the reason for keeping this head face is to allow aeration, splashing, forming of aqueous medium, all those things, okay. So, otherwise uh, the fermenter will be under stress, there should be an air space uh, to control all those things. As we have discussed in a typical batch fermenter, the most important thing is the, the center of attraction in the fermentation is nothing but the microorganism. We should take care of the health of the microorganism. If any change in the pH or temperature, what will happen? The organism cannot survive there. It cannot carry out a proper fermentation process. There should be a pH control. Okay, so, in, the, in case of a normal fermenter, there will be an auto titrator, auto titrator. So, what is the meaning of auto titrator is there will be a, a pH probe. The pH probe will detect that what is the pH. So, you will be always uh, already fed that the pH should be maintained at 7. So, once the pH variation is happening, happened, what will happen? This uh, probe will detect this pH variation and it will uh, instruct the auto titrated to control the pH. So, depends upon what pH variation is there, it will spread alkali or acid to maintain the pH into normal level whatever we, have, we wanted. So, that is called the pH controller that is uh, we have auto titrated to maintain that. And the, another thing is I told that lot of exothermic endothermic reactions which will happen, there will be a lot of temperature va variation. So, there should be a temperature control in case of the organism, I mean in the fermenter. So, the temperature control is achieved by a water jacket around the vessel, okay. There will be a water jacket which will be there. So, this will, uh, this will control all type of what the temperature variation. So, this is often supplemented by use of internal coils in order to provide sufficient heat transfer surface, okay. There will be coils to uh, maintain the temperature. So, the, uh, the overall uh, uh, conclusion regarding this temperature control is that is the temperature should be maintained for that the water jackets as well as the coils will be there that will uh, uh, always take care of what the temperature maintenance of the fermenter media. Yeah. Okay, the next important thing is it is a huge volume of fermenter. So, there should be a proper agitation should happen inside the uh, fermenter. Okay, so, the agitating device consists of you can just look at your diagram so that uh, uh, you will be clear that is the agitating device con consists of a strong and straight shaft to which the impellers are fitted. You can see here strong and straight shaft in which what, are, what is there? The impellers are uh, uh, fitted. Um, and imp uh, this impeller is, uh, uh, I mean, in turn, what is an impeller I wanted to mention? It consists of a circular disc. You can look at the diagram to which the blades are fitted with bolts, okay. So, the blades are fi uh, fitted there, okay. So, there are different uh, uh, types uh, of uh, blades are available. 
okay so depends upon the type of ferment uh, there will be different types of the blade, blades will be available, available and are used according to the requirements okay so you can see here it's a very simple uh, construction you see that there is a cylinder type thing and then they, in that the impl impellers are attached uh, the shaft passes through the bearing of the lid of the fermentation tank right see here the shaft which is there the shaft will, uh, shaft is passing through a bearing in the lid of the fermentation tank and it is rotated with the help of an electric motor okay so so the speed i mean depends upon the fermentation process or the speed will be varied so the speed will be controlled with a particular motor very simple thing you can just see here that is uh, uh, there will be shaft which will be there right and uh, there will be a motor which will be connected which will be keep on rotating so what happen there will be a proper aeration will be given for this particular fermentation media so the, uh, uh, sorry agitation the specific agitation will be given to the media the next important uh, thing which is which is required for the fermentation process is nothing but a aeration okay so we have uh, uh, discussed uh, I mean uh, this particular diagram, I am uh, sorry, this is agitation and this one is aeration. To provide the aeration, so this particular apparatus is available. So usually the aerating device consists of a pipe, you just to see the diagram, you will come to know that it contains uh, a pipe with the minute holes through which uh, the pressurized air escapes into the aqueous media. You can see that, you can visualize that there. So, through which what happens? The pressurized air escapes into the aqueous media in the form of tiny air bubbles. So, the aeration device is called sparger. So, this is this particular aeration device is called what? Sparger. You just see here. So, what exactly happens, happens here? There is a pipe with minute holes and through which what happens? The pressurized air escapes into the aqueous media in the form of what? Tiny air bubbles. So, the aeration, uh, I mean what is the name of that aeration device? It is called what? Sparger. The size of the holes in the sparger ranges from 1, 1, per, 1 out of 64 to 1 out of 32 uh, in the unit of inch. Okay? So, that is the uh, typical uh, range that is 1 by 64 to 1 by 32 of an inch is the size of the holes. This is very important because holes smaller than this require too high air pressure and uh, for the uh, bubble formation. Okay, so so the maintaining of the size is a very important aspect, and that will create a proper aeration. You know that the, it, uh, the air is required for the proper growth and multiplication of the organism. So the proper aeration and agitation is very much required for that. In the fermenter, there will be different devices which will be fitted for agitation as well as aeration. And uh, before concluding this session, you just uh, uh, see this diagram. This is a basic uh, uh, of a fermenter. A fermenter, you know that uh, the fermenter which is made up of what? A strong material. We have discussed the, the characteristic features of the fermenter. And you can see here acid base inlet. So, what may be the use of acid base inlet? That is, if any, see, we have a, a auto titrator, even though if you wanted to, if you want to manually adjust the pH of the media, pH of the fermentation media, there will be an inlet. So, you through which you can adjust the pH, that is what the acid base inlet. The next one is nutrient inlet, the name itself tells you what is that nut uh, nutrient inlet. That is, so if you want to fetch the nutrient further or during the process or initial process, so through which you can transfer the nutrient and there will be sensors for all the things like your pH, what is the oxygen tension inside, what is the temperature, etc. All those things will be, there will be a sensor and uh, many of the fermentation fermenters are nothing but uh, semi-automated so that it, it only will be carrying out what has to be done. So, you, you can see here the stirring paddles or the aeration agitation. We have seen that stirring paddles. It will properly stir the fermentation media throughout the fermentation process so that uh, the nutrient, the air, everything will be made available for each and every organism which is uh, uh, doing the fermentation process inside. So there will be here you can see I mean it is not very clear there is a jacket it is nothing but the water jacket just now we discussed that, that to maintain the uh, temperature there will be a water jacket for the transfer of heat so that the temperature will be maintained. So here at the end you can see that the product outlet so once the fermentation process is over we have to remove the product or remove the 
uh, entire broth or the culture from the fermentation uh, uh, sorry the fermenter so for that you will be having a product outlet also then coming to I mean this is an exhaust uh, outlet uh, you know that what is the function of the exact uh, outlet so there will be different so we will be seeing the uh, structure of a typical fermenter in detail in the next class so these are all the basic uh, uh, aspects of the basic uh, uh, design of a particular fermenter. So, in the next class we will see what are all different types of firm. first we will see what is the uh, what are the important components of a typical fermenter then types of the fermenter there are so many classes of uh, fermenters are available all those things we will see in the next class. So, that is about uh, the basics of uh, a fermenter.